Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today we're gonna finally pull our and stretch our last two runs of fence. This right here is our shortest run of fence. It's only 100 feet long and short runs are a little bit less forgiving. Over here, we've got our longest run of fence and it's actually got a few corners it's gonna go around, it's gonna zigzag. And we've spent a few days getting this run over here ready and I think we're finally ready to actually stretch these two last sections of fence. So these short runs are really tricky to be able to get pulled tight and tied off. And when you release them, not be able to go loose on you and sag a little bit. So short runs are very less forgiving. Um, so we got a couple tricks today that we're gonna do on the short run that's hopefully gonna make this a lot easier and stay tight. Go ahead, just snug this up a little bit. I'm not really gonna get it tight. We're just gonna get it snug. Just make sure it stands up on its own. So to help hold the fence up, well, we got everything attached down there, ready to pull. We ended up putting on some of these uh, spring clips here on the T-posts and uh, try to take these back off. There it went, see it was pulling that post. So we just gotta get these off of there so it doesn't inhibit us from stretching this tight. All right, I think I got it fairly tight. The reason it's bowed like this is because we're actually going downhill. So the bottom one is tight against the ground and this has actually got to be lifted up and it'll be pretty hard for us to lift that up, but it'll be somewhere like that. Oh, well, that's gonna look, that's gonna look pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead, start tying it off. I'll show you what we're gonna do to make it stay tight. Just gonna make sure we got enough to be able to wrap around the post. We're gonna go ahead and strip a little bit of this out. I may not strip it as far as I normally do. Well, I screwed up. I was decided I would strip out a little bit further for right in here for the gate latch. There's gonna be a gate latch that sits here. And when I cut it, I actually cut the horizontals instead of the verticals. So now I'm splicing on a short piece of wire to wrap around the post. So I'll show you my fix here when I get done. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it should work. So I just put on three high uh, tensile crimps and crimp them on there. And then I've just got this extra piece of wire where I should be able to wrap this back around the post to itself. That should work. So to tie this off, we're gonna be using a gripple T-clip. So we're gonna take our T-clip and then we're gonna hook that over the fence. And then we're gonna try to push our wire through the clip. And then we're gonna pull that as tight as we can. So when the wire pulls in, it locks into place and it won't back out. So just basically pulling on the wire, pushing on the fence, trying to get it tight. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna cut it off and bend it back over itself so that there's a second layer of protection to keep it from pulling out. So if you look behind me, you'll see we got a storm rolling in right now. So we're trying to rush. We're probably gonna make mistakes. I've already made a few trying to rush, trying to beat this storm. So we're gonna back off for a second and then we'll come back. We'll put the rest of these T-clips in. So it's been at least three hours, maybe four hours now since the storm went through. It was a pretty big storm. We got another storm coming in. So I'm gonna try to get this tied off real quick so we can move on to the next fence. I think um, we're gonna use these T-clips to tie this off. That's gonna make it a lot quicker and I think we're gonna be we're gonna have like a lot better chance of it staying tight um, rather than us tying it off. I think these are gonna work better. Try to get the wire through. So I'm just gonna bend myself a handle here to grab and I'm just gonna push on the fence and uh, kind of pull that through. There we go. All right, we got our T-clips installed and we got our wire bent back. Hopefully you guys can, can see that. And it looks like we got every one of these all nice and snug. Now, the top and bottom wire on these fences is bigger. It's like 10 gauge, very hard to tie off. So if you don't use this for the whole thing, you might consider at least using it for the top and bottom wire. 
to, to tie it off because it makes it a lot easier on those. But definitely way quicker than tying that whole thing off. We're gonna go ahead, release these two come alongs, and then hopefully this should all stay nice and tight. Ideally, if we can get this to uh, tighten up in about one, <laughs> not quite one, but if we can do it in one or two, that's pretty good. And there we go. That's not too bad. It released fairly quickly. The fence is so tight. So the fence may not look tight, but it is. It's very tight. This is actually gonna be very hard to probably lift up and to hold the right height. Probably need to mark this. And then we'll start stapling this on the wooden posts. Wooden posts are gonna hold your fence up or down way better than T-posts. T-posts aren't really meant to hold your post or to hold your fence up or down. That's what the wooden posts are for. So what I've been doing lately is I basically put one of these old style T-post clips on and uh, I wrap that on there fairly tight. And that's gonna hold the fence to the T-post well. And then for the rest of the clips, I just use those spring clips. And uh, because they'll just hold it, the T-post or the fence to the T-post, as in these old style do a lot better of holding up and down on the fence. So these spring loaded ones, I'll just put those every so often. Helps if I put them the right way. And you just basically spring them on there and they hold the fence up against the post. And they're just a lot quicker to put on. So for the one that I tie and wrap around here, I try to make sure the wire is a wire that's sitting right on top of one of these, um, one of these nubs, I guess. That way it actually holds the fence up or down, whatever you need. But uh, that's where I put the one that ties on and then the rest of them I use those spring clips. So one thing I like about the lineman pliers is you can twist on this and you can really tighten that up there. All right, we got our fence all stapled down to the wooden post tied to the T post, all looks good. You see our T clips, they're all nice and snug down here on this end. Actually looks pretty good, pretty happy with that. A lot easier than tying off. And the fence stayed nice and tight. If you look at it, pretty happy with the way this all looks. So now we're gonna have to move on to the next run of fence. So right here is our next stretch of fence. It is the longest. We've already got it tied off to this end. And then we've got our roll of wire over here with the tractor so we can start unrolling it. Now this run of fence is going 12 feet 12 feet out from the existing fence line, the old fence line that we cleaned up with the brush hog the other day. And you can see here, we've got our line posts and everything put in here. This was a big mess pulling this out. So when we got in here and started cleaning this out, we did run into a few problems. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit of that footage right now. Well, we were putting line posts in on this far side over here and we ended up hitting something with the auger and it broke off the bolt inside of here, which that's designed to do that to, so you don't tear something up. So we started digging down, thought it was a rock. No, it was a piece of metal. It's a big piece of metal. That's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's an old drag harrow, like an old chisel drag. You drag out behind the tractor, you got these chisels that smooth out the ground behind the disc or the plow. So we would have never found that if we were trying to 
put some posts in today. So we're gonna move that over to the scrap pile. And eventually we're gonna have a big load of scrap to haul off because we keep finding stuff like this. So besides running into the metal in the ground and that, that drag harrow in the ground, we also, there's just a bunch of junk back here in the brush. And when we were putting in this wooden post right here, um, Rebecca ended up getting hurt. So yesterday we were almost finished putting in these wooden posts and we were over here um, stomping in this very muddy hole. <laughs> yeah, we were packing in the dirt, weren't we? Yeah, so I was going around the posts and I stepped down, I had my boots on and I have a tendency to wear boots with no socks. So, <laughs> so I just had my boots on, no socks and I stepped down and I instantly felt um, this very stabbing pain. So I looked down and this is what I was, I had stepped on. It went through my boot and through my foot. Um, I took my shoe off and my foot was bleeding. Hadn't had a tetanus shot in probably 16 years or so. So I had to go get a tetanus shot. <laughs> so besides the board that she stepped on, I did end up pulling out a bunch more metal. I went through right where that was with the grapple to see what else was in there. And I think I pulled out about three or four pieces of metal in there as well, besides some boards and stuff. But uh, there's just a lot of trash here along this fence line. And I probably just missed it. It was just outside of where we brush hogged with the tractor. And we probably, we spent at least two, three days, you know, trying to get this fence line all set up and ready to pull. We had stepped through there multiple times, so. I yeah, I don't know how we didn't step on it. I was actually working on that backside and we had gone around that post several times and it's just like right at the end, somehow we had all not stepped on it. And then right at the end, you ended up stepping on that. That nail was just sticking right out of the dirt. You couldn't tell it was a nail. I mean, it would have looked like a twig or something like that. Yeah, I said I was glad I stepped on it and not the cows because I couldn't imagine being a cow with a nail stuck in your hoof. Yeah, yep. And luckily all this trash is going to be on the other side of the fence and we're going to come back and clean up this whole fence row later on, probably this winter, and at least the cows will be in here away from all that old stuff. Sure. Row of storms coming in, not quite as big as the last ones, but we're going to go ahead and keep working on this. We're going to start dragging this fence out. Now the problem with this fence is that there is another trash pile back there and this fence goes and zigzags around it. And I've laid this fence out so that this straight part can be permanent. And we can use all this later and the only thing that we won't use is the zigzag. Later we can clean that out, we can straighten the fence out and we can make this our permanent fence line. But for right now it's gonna have a little jog in it. Now it's gonna make laying the fence, it's gonna make rolling the fence out a pain in the butt really because it's going to be on the inside of the fence the pasture here and then it's got to go on the outside of that post and then go on the inside of that post and then back on the outside and then back on the inside it's just going to be constantly weaving that fence around a few of these posts it's going to make it pull harder it's going to make this whole stretch just a lot more difficult Well, I was afraid this might happen. Our roll wasn't quite long enough. So one full roll is 330 feet and we were short probably about 10 feet. Plus I probably need at least another two feet or more to be able to wrap around and tie it off. But luckily I've got an old roll from when we did the barnyard fencing, what, three years ago, four years ago. Um, and um, so I've got that partial roll. So we're gonna cut this off. We're gonna splice on another 15 feet or so, and then we'll be able to finish this run. All right, I went ahead and I spliced about 18 fence of feet on here, and I just used the medium-sized gripples and uh, got it connected together here. We'll kind of put the tool on here and we'll try to straighten this out and make it look a little bit better once we tighten it up. I've got my stretcher on there. I've got it pulling at the top of the post and the very bottom of the post, so hopefully those chains aren't in the way when I tie it off and then I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna tighten up this brace wire now because if you see right here you see there's a little bit of a gap right there so the the posts have somewhat settled and I'm gonna go ahead I want to tighten 
the braces up on both ends before I start stretching this. Now, this is just temporarily tied up to the T-post right now. As soon as I put a little tension on there, I'll take all these clips off. And there's, this is gonna be really hard to pull because it's gonna wanna catch, the knots on this fence is gonna wanna catch around each one of these posts that it's pulling around. So we're gonna put some tension on it and we're gonna kinda push on the fence at each one of the posts and try to get the fence to slide around the posts. And we're just gonna work at this real slow to try to make sure that it has the same amount of tension on this end as the other end. But let's go ahead, we'll start working this fence and see if we can get it done. All right, we've had to adjust a few things. So we've got this side fairly tight, we've got our gripples in here, and then it looks fairly good here. Um, but the problem is, is every time it goes around a post, it gets looser. So this is the tightest section. And the next piece right there is gonna be just a little bit looser. And as we get around here, this side is looser, and then that side is even more looser. And we actually have a staple in the top of each wooden post just to somewhat hold it up, or else this would be laying down. So it just gets looser as we went around. So what we've done is we put in a second splice in here. So we've got a bunch of gripples right here, and this is gonna allow us to tighten this side of the fence. So that side's fairly tight. This will allow us to tighten this one up. And it's just because it's, it's dragging on each one of these posts. So this is a good spot here in the middle and when we splice this fence back together later, this fence will be straight. It'll be straight right through here once we clean this all out, and then this will all be gone. But I think this is a temporary solution just to try to even out the tension across both or all the sides here on this fence. All right, we got our gripples tightened up here and I'm afraid to really go too much more it doesn't look bad here it's still sagging on this side over here and uh, the problem is it's starting to lean my corner posts so I mean the corner posts are starting to pull in I really I really don't want to pull on it anymore so uh, you can tell I think once we staple this up it won't look too bad but if we look down here at the bottom of that post I don't know if you'll be able to see that it's pulled out about an inch in the ground um, it's pulled an inch over this direction. So it's done that on each one of these corner posts that's dragging around. So this is just temporary. So instead of trying to make this perfect, I just, I just need to call it good and move on. So on the end of the fence, we've got our T-clips and then we cut off the wire and we bent them back and that's all tidied up there. Right here, all of our gripples ended up being right on top of our post and normally we would staple it down and they're kind of in the way. So we only got about four staples in that section there. And then the rest of this fence, we just have it tied to the top of the post. So it's not completely attached, but you can see this first run looks pretty good and the second run looks pretty good. So after the fence pulls around the second post, this actually doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of wave in it. And uh, as it goes past the third post, it just gets all wavy and there's really not much we can do about it. So here we are on the last section of fence and hopefully you guys can see that it's all wavy. It's not tight, but I don't think there's nothing else we can do. So I knew when we went to pull this last section of fence, we were gonna run into a lot of trouble. I knew it wasn't gonna go well. Pulling around one fence post, one corner, pulling around one is bad enough as it is. It's really hard to get it where it's tight on both sides. Uh, fence does not want to go around a fence post. It just wants to dig in, the knots wanna dig in. It doesn't wanna slide around a wooden post. And so one's pretty hard. Three is pretty much impossible and um, yeah, it wasn't working at all, really. So I ended up cutting in that splice down at the other end, hoping that I would put another place to tighten it and it would hopefully straighten the other end out and make it look good. Um, it did help. It does look a lot better than it did the first time I tried without the splice. And um, 
but it's just not as tight as I want it to be. It's, it's still got waves and stuff in it, so it's not tight. It'll work. Uh, we'll be able to tie it to the fence posts and it'll hold the steers in. It's just going to not look nice and straight. It's going to be wavy. Um, so a little disappointed that I couldn't get it to look as good as I wanted, but it is temporary. I just got to keep telling myself that it's temporary. It doesn't matter. In another year or so, it'll be, we'll have a nice straight fence line here and that zigzag will be gone. But uh, I think one thing, one reason why it didn't work, the gripple splice is because where I put it. So I put it after the second turn and I knew eventually we were gonna have to cut this fence in half. When we take the zigzag out, we'll have to cut it in half and then straighten it back up. And that was a good spot for us to take the fence apart and straighten it up. If I would have put it further down the line in the straight section at the far end, I think it would have tightened the fence up better, but then it would have been inside of this permanent section of fence. And I, was, I would prefer not to put it in there if I didn't have to. So anyway, it is what it is. I think, I mean, it's gonna work just fine the way it is. And I really would like to get this fence done, but it's not gonna happen today. It's not gonna probably happen this week. Um, I really want to get the steers moved into here, but it's cloudy today, but the next four or five days, it's actually going to be sunny and no rain. So I may have a chance to cut hay. So I've got to start getting all my hay equipment out, get it all ready to cut hay. I got to go through the hay bind, fix the hay bind because today or tomorrow I'm going to end up being, hopefully if the weather's good, I'm going to cut our first cut of hay. So we're going to stop the uh, pasture fencing for a week or two and move on to to processing some hay, see if we can get our hay fields cut. Looks like we'll end up cutting both of them. Uh, so we'll just, uh, we'll come back to this hopefully in a couple weeks and finish it up. But that's it for today's video guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.